Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Technical Explained. In this lecture, we are going to study the NIPES criteria. Now, we have studied in the previous lectures that an amplifier with negative feedback is stable. And we have studied that an amplifier with positive feedback is unstable. We also learned in our previous lectures that the gain of an amplifier change with frequency, especially it drops off at higher frequency. Also, the phase shift of an amplifier changes with frequency. So, it is possible that because of this phase change with frequency, some of the feedback signal might be added to the input signal and as a result, the, as a result an amplifier might lead to instability. As a result, the amplifier might break into the oscillations. The amplifier feedback circuit might break into the oscillations. So what is the Nyquist criteria? Nyquist criteria is used to investigate the stability of the feedback amplifier. It tells us whether the feedback amplifier is stable or not and it also tells us how much stable the feedback amplifier is, especially in terms of gain margin and phase margin. Now two parameters are very important when we are discussing the stability of the feedback amplifier. That is the loop gain which is the magnitude of the product of beta A and the overall phase shift between input and output. So these two parameters are very important when we are discussing the stability of the feedback amplifier. Now what is this Nyquist curve or Nyquist plot? Nyquist curve or Nyquist plot is actually a combination of two curves. One is the gain versus frequency and the other is the phase versus frequency which are the body plots. So Nyquist uh, curve or Nyquist plot is actually a combination of these two types of curves or these two types of plots and they are plotted in the same plane which is a complex plane. So when these two plots are plotted in the same plane which is a complex plane, that plane is called the Nyquist plane. So in Nyquist plane, both the gain versus frequency and phase versus frequency is plotted in the same plane and that is a complex plane. And in that complex plane, the real axis are the x-axis, the real are the x-axis represents the loop gain. It, uh, the real axis represents the magnitude of the loop gain. So the real axis actually represents the magnitude of the loop gain. The imaginary uh, axis represents the phase. So Nyquist plot is plotted for increasing values of frequency. So we plot this uh, loop gain on the x-axis and this phase on the y-axis and they are plotted for the increasing values of frequency. So this is the Nyquist plan. On the real axis we have the magnitude of loop gain which is beta a. On the imaginary axis we have the phase which is phi. So the x-axis represents the magnitude of the loop gain and the y-axis represents the phase change. For example, at point 1, we have the magnitude of beta A is equal to 2 and phase shift of 0 degree. Similarly, at point 3, we have the magnitude of beta A is equal to 1 and phase shift of 180 degree. Similarly, at point 2, we have the magnitude of loop gain is equal to 3 and phase shift of 135 degree. So, if the magnitude of loop gain and phase shift is plotted for the increasing values of frequency, we obtain the Nyquist plot. You can see over here that at the origin the loop gain is equal to 0 and the frequency is also equal to 0 that is why we are at the origin at the point uh, which is f is equal to 0 because of the RC coupling time type as the frequency increases the phase shift also increases and the magnitude of the loop gain also increases so you can uh, have a look at the f1 f2 f3 as the frequency is increasing the magnitude of the loop gain is also going to increase and the phase shift is also going to increase at a frequency which is equal to f4 the magnitude of the loop gain equals to this vector so this vector is the magnitude of the loop gain and the phase equal to this phi so there the phase shift is around here at the, at the point F5, we have the phase shift of 180 degree and again the loop gain in this case is going to be this much from this point to this point. And at higher frequency, again the loop gain is shown to decrease. So the loop gain again decreases at higher frequency and when it reaches at very high frequency, when the frequency approaches infinite, the loop gain again approaches to zero. Now how to judge the stability using the Nyquist plot? 
So the amplifier is unstable if the Nyquist curve or the Nyquist plot encloses the minus one point and it is stable otherwise. So if the Nyquist plot or the Nyquist curve encloses the minus one point, the amplifier is unstable and if it does not, then the amplifier is stable. For example, in the figure, we have two types of Nyquist plot and they are plotted for the increasing frequency. Now this plot does not encircle the minus one point. So this plot is going to be stable. So the amplifier for this plot is stable. So this amplifier is stable. Now in the second case, the Nyquist curve or the Nyquist plot encloses the minus one circle. So in this case, the amplifier is unstable. Now why is it so? Why is it that the uh, when the Nyquist square encloses the minus one uh, point the amplifier is unstable and if it does not then the amplifier is stable. Because encircling the minus one point means that at the phase shift of 180 degree the loop gain is greater than one. Therefore in this case the feedback is going to be in phase with the input signal and large enough to result in a larger input signal than that applied which may result in oscillations. So we know that for the feedback amplifier to be stable is the magnitude of the uh, of the loop gain should be less than one at phase shift of 180 degree. Now encircling the minus one point means that the magnitude of the loop gain is equal to or greater than one at the phase shift of 180 degree. That is why then the uh, amplifier becomes unstable because then we have the positive feedback and which may result in oscillations. Then we have gain in phase margins. Gain in phase margins tell us how much stable the amplifier is, how much stable the feedback amplifier is. For example, if I have the magnitude gain for one of the feedback amplifier is 0.95 and for the other uh, feedback amplifier I have the magnitude of loop gain is equal to 0.7. Now both these amplifiers are stable. Both these feedback amplifiers are stable. But the thing is that this amplifier, this is more stable than this amplifier uh, which is which has the loop gain of 0.95 because this amplifier is relatively close to instability and this amplifier is more stable than this feedback amplifier. So that that is going to be uh, cleared by this gain and phase margin. Okay, so what is gain margin? Gain margin is defined with respect to beta a is equal to 1. That is with respect to loop gain is equal to 1. And loop gain of 1 in linear scale is equal to loop gain of 0 in decibel scale. So the gain margin is defined with respect to loop gain is equal to 1 that is with respect to loop gain is equal to 0 dB because on linear scale 1 is equal to 0 in dB and it is defined at 180 degree phase shift. So the loop gain margin is defined uh, with respect to loop gain is equal to 1 or the loop gain is equal to 0 dB and it is defined at 180 degree phase shift. For example, if I have the magnitude of loop gain is equal to 1 then I am going to have 0 dB. If I have the magnitude of loop gain greater than 1, then I am going to have the positive dB. And when I have the magnitude of the loop gain less than 1, then I am going to have the negative dB. And this is all taken at 180 degree phase shift. So at 180 degree phase shift, if I have the loop gain less than 1 that is if I have the uh, loop gain of negative dB then the amplifier is going to be stable. So if gain margin is negative then the feedback amplifier is stable and how much negative this beta a this loop gain is at phase angle of 180 degree is called its gain margin. For example if I have gain margin, for example, I have gain margin of minus 3 dB, which means that the beta A is again less than 1. That is why we have the gain margin of negative over here. And similarly, if I have the another gain margin of another feedback amplifier, which is minus 6 dB. So this is now more stable than this, than this feedback amplifier. So 
we can say that the more negative db the gain margin is the more stable the amplifier is the more stable the feedback amplifier is because gain margin of minus 6 db is better than the gain margin of minus 3 db this feedback amplifier is going to be more stable than this feedback amplifier so more the negative the db the gain margin is the more stable it is the more stable the feedback amplifier is so this is the plot of the gain margin versus frequency this is the magnitude of the loop gain and this is the frequency now at this point at this point we have the phase shift of 180 degree and this point let me name this at point b at point b we have the phase shift of 180 degree at point a we have the beta a is equal to 1 r 0 db you can have a look over here at this stage we have the beta a is equal to 0 db or beta a is equal to 1 so now at, at this stage we have if we can have a look we have the negative db if i extend this over here we are going to have some negative db for example minus 3 db so in this case we have the gain margin of negative that is why this is going to be stable and the gain margin is from here from these two points from a to b because the difference between these two points is going to be minus 3 db so in this case if this point is minus 3 db on this axis we are going to have the gain margin of minus 3 db so at 180 degree phase shift we have negative gain margin which is for example say minus 3 db so that's why this feedback amplifier is stable now next is the phase margin phase margin is given as we can write over here that phase margin is given as 180 minus the magnitude of the phase angle and this phase angle which is uh, which is the phi m is equal to magnitude of the angle i'm going to write over here magnitude of the angle at which the open loop gain that is the magnitude of the open loop gain is equal to 1 so phase margin is defined as the angle of 180 degree minus the magnitude of the angle at which the beta a is equal to 1 r 0 db so this is our phase margin again we can understand this to an example now in this case i have the beta a is equal to 1 so in this case i have the magnitude of the loop gain is equal to 1 and this is my 180 degree phase shift so this is point a and this is point a so the difference of the magnitude of these angles that is at this angle for example i have an angle of minus 90 degree so the phase margin in this case is going to be according to the definition of phase margin because this delta m is equal to now equal to minus 90 degree so the phase margin is going to be 180 minus the magnitude of minus 90 degree which means 180 minus 90 degree which is equal to the 90 degree so in this case the phase margin is going to be the 90 degree because at the point b i have the phase shift of 180 degree but but at the point a where the loop open loop gain sorry where the loop gain is equal to 1 i have the phase margin of 90 degree because the difference between these two points is 90 degree now let us understand the gain margin and phase margin combinedly so this is my gain margin at this stage at this point i have the beta a that is the magnitude of beta a is equal to 1 r 0 db and at this stage i have 180 degree phase shift if we can have a look let me name it as point a and this point a is also over here which is point a and this is point b and this point is also over here at point b so at point a i have the beta a is equal to 1 r 0 db at the point b i have the phase shift of 180 degree now if you can have a look we have in this case the gain margin is going to be the difference between these two points fine because this is my gain margin similarly at this stage the difference between these two points is going to be the phase margin which is whatever it is for example this is some value whatever it is we can find the phase margin between these two points so this was all about the nyquist criteria thank you